Hi, I'm Greg, and this is Two Sun Sailing. Today, we're in the final stages of refurbishing an old Seminole boat trailer to make it roadworthy and compatible with a 24-foot shoal draft sailboat. It takes me four times to find the right size every time I do this. Every time. Holding it that time. Personally, when it comes to wheels, I use the German Torx spec. Torx spec? The German Torx spec states that all bolts should be good and tight. You look, Dad. Yeah. Over in that stack of shame over there yeah. are the old front hubs. If you grab a likely candidate for. I really should put a little bit of anises on these or something. But. Oh well. Let me make sure we put blocks under stuff before we actually drop everything right down again. <laughs> All these nice new wheels and nice new bearings and watch the stupid thing go yeah, careening down the driveway. <laughs> Whee! My trailer! As we were backing the trailer up the driveway when we brought it home, there was a minor disagreement between the trailer and the mailbox, which the mailbox won. Luckily, I guess this is easier to fix than the mailbox. Um, so we're gonna replace the tail lights along with a few other things. Luckily, this is straightforward. These are only held on by two screws. This side's a little more complicated in that it's got a license plate holder too, but it's still reasonably straightforward. Just two screws, a couple more nuts in between things. There's nothing quite like a, a nylock nut on a long screw. It's not a question of if you get there, it's just a question of when. There she is. These were needless to say, I don't believe rated for submersion. So I got some new ones that'll be great. We'll probably reuse the license plate holder, assuming it fits. Nope. Nope, it's the other side. No, it's not. It is. I'll tell you how I know. How do you know? So this, if we look, has a light and a side light, and yeah. we flip it up, a solid bottom. This light <laughs> has the tail light, the side light, and a bottom light to light up the license plate. So that's good, and we can I'll do the watch for now. Normally, I, was, I would expect to see the crimp on ones that are like a tube and you yeah. can put on either yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. These just are one side, so. You know, I have gloves. Too late? Yeah, it's this rubber stuff's got road dirt on it. I don't know what color this is. Yeah, they're both yellow. You know, if we call the channel Two Dads Sailing, no one's gonna watch it. It's just dad jokes all day. Yeah. You don't need no stinking electrical tape. Mm -hmm. If it's not corroding, what good is it? There should be some in there, though. If not, we'll find yeah. some. It might be in there. I've got a bucket of tape, too. So it may have been 
Yeah. Class. Nah, no, we'll do it later. All right. So this side just gets. A regular bolt stack up, no license plate or anything like that. But. Last time I bought lights, I had to take them back because they were um, moisture resistant, not, not submersible. The other ones had so many holes in them, I'm not sure it mattered. They just drained really well. Look at that, color codes. You gotta love a good color code. So the this is the ground for the trailer itself and that broke off at some point, either just corroded or flexed off. And we also have to connect the backup solenoid for the brakes. This just locks the brakes out when you shift the car into park. There is a pin up here that does the same thing, but this is automatic. And so we'll just hook that back up where the old one was. Every once in a while I do something, and I can just imagine everyone on YouTube screaming. This is one of those things. He's tying two cords together! I'm gonna cut those pieces off. This is where I lose it in the middle of the trailer. Then you can hear me scream. Ah, success. What this doesn't show is me spending 10 minutes to find the right driver to get this teeny tiny little hex screw off. But the right tool for the right job makes it go a lot faster. I had an adjustable wrench, but it was so small it was just going to strip it. I did not have to resort to the... Uh, Persuaders. Uh, vice grips. Uh, speaking of the right tool for the right job, this is a sheet metal screw. Which, technically speaking, is totally wrong for this, but so luckily this isn't too badly corroded inside, it's just the end where it went into the terminal. Red to red. Oh, that's why this came off. It's too short. That's way too short. And we'll fix it later. When this comes off again, and it will, we'll fix that. We may, uh, I don't know, do something with this to try and make that a little bit shorter, tie it off somewhere. I also want to get this around the brake line so the brake line doesn't rub. Although I'm not sure what would come off first, the brake line or the trailer. I don't know. Make that look reasonably nice and pretty. And then we just plug it into the car and test it, which we can't do because my car does not have that kind of electrical on it. So when we get the truck... And we can test it. We can test it. So the electrical is pretty simple. Tail light, tail light, brakes, ground, done. The trailer had previously been set up for a motorboat. It had a full set of keel rollers, but since motorboats are so much lighter, it didn't have any significant bunk support. I removed the existing bunks and guides, and we fabricated our own that should be compatible with most small sailboats. some water. How much? Enough to put out a fire. Where would you like it? On the fire.
That one was under some pressure. It was. Holy smoke. It's off. Luckily, most of these bolts seem to be in pretty good shape. Actually, I'm not... I'm not entirely sure these aren't stainless. Just kind of seems like overkill, but whatever. Don't drop on my foot, please. Have fun storming the castle. You win the award for that one. Yes, the RSP. Which is gonna be great fun, but so if you look, it was actually see the little mark yeah. from where the height was before. Too late. That's enough. Yeah. The best part about this is that if we, if something goes catastrophically wrong, we're probably going to have video of us somewhere two days prior going, I think it's okay? Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> Cut scene. With the, with the Cut boat scene, boat with a hole in the ground it. between the wheels. None of the prefabricated bunk supports were high enough for what we needed, so I fabricated some out of zinc-plated tube stock. They're basically just a two-foot length of pipe with a hole drilled in one end to mount a pair of brackets that connect the upright to the bunk itself.
This is what I'm going to use for bunk supports. Uh, I would have preferred to get square tube because it would have fit up against the frame better and been a little more secure. But the round tube was readily available at my local hardware store, and the square tube would have been special order and about three times three times as expensive. So I think this will work fine though. So we just got to put some brackets on them and attach them to the bunks. Ultimately, these should be nylock uh, nuts, but the hardware store was out of them, so we're going to have to make sure these are actually tight. Ideally, you'd want these to have a little bit of um, clearance in them so that the bunk could swivel, but in this case, once we get the bunks set, we're just going to tighten them down to make sure the screws don't back off. I hope those are enough. I think they're enough. So that's all eight of the bunk mounts, or I guess the bunk upright bracket mounts complete. They're basically just two U-bolts with um, brackets behind them. So the bunk bracket goes through here and the trailer goes through there. So now we just gotta finish tightening those lag screws and install the bunks. We dropped. We'll, do, we'll make this. You're gonna put me in, in, in the shop, right? Yeah, yeah. So they see your face when everything goes so south. Grab the, grab the wood, not the. That's the one that had one on it before. So this is what we'll do when the boat's on it, right? I'm gonna leave it like this overnight. Go ahead. Oh, you're bending it? Yeah. Right. I think that's probably enough. I finished tacking down the protective fabric of the bunks late at night and didn't want to disturb the neighbors by filming. The fabric I used is marine carpet I picked up from my local hardware store. You can buy specialty bunk covers for around $70, but this costs less than $20. It probably won't last as long and might be more likely to damage the bottom paint, but for the time being, I'm happy with this. So that was the last of the work that has to be done on the trailer. We got new suspension. We got new brakes, we got new wheels, we got some electrical work taken care of, and we got new bunks. It's ready for a 23-foot, 24-foot shoulder draft sailboat. And it's a good thing, too, because just before I finished the trailer, I was poking around online, and I found something exciting. Tune in next time for that.